Hey, so uh, we're doing something a little different today. Um, I recorded a video with my mother. Uh, we're starting a series where we uh, talk about um, animated films uh, together. And um, one reason I wanted to do it with my mother is because I myself love animation and I've kind of fallen in love with it over the course of the past few years. Uh, I just really like cartoons more so than traditional like live action film personally because there's just so much more that you can do with it um and you can be like as weird or as normal as you want to be with a cartoon so uh but my mother um isn't super in like that cartoon world there are certain ones that she knows and likes um she is mostly familiar with like traditional disney stuff um and, you know, just movies like that. But one thing that we're really not going to be talking about is the well-loved, like, Disney and DreamWorks and uh, Pixar movies. Um, we are starting with a DreamWorks movie for this video, but uh, for the most part, not really going to be touching uh, those big three, I guess. So, um... Yeah, so it's going to be me, the guy who knows things, talking to my mom, the one who doesn't know things, um, and hopefully it'll be interesting. So here's store brand cartoons. Hey. <laughs> uh, welcome to store brand comics. Um, I'm Tio, and normally I talk about comic books, but we're doing something a little bit different. This is my mom. Say, hi. Say hi, mom. Hi. She, um, I guess mom is, uh, she's your mom now too, so that's just what you're going to call her. Um. I'm the store brand mom. The store brand mom, or mom for short. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, today we watched The Road to El Dorado for the first time in like 15 years. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that struck me about the movie is... Uh, I forgot how good the music is. It's not bad. I liked it. I, it's It wasn't quite what I remembered from mm -hmm. when I was younger. But um, it's. I still think it was pretty good. It is. And it's Elton John, so I yeah. like his music. But I just feel like he was very... Like when he said his R's, is really R-y. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just... It was interesting. And, you know, trying to fit all those words into one little sentence and trying to tell a story with a song and stuff like that. That was interesting listening to that. But yeah, it's it's better music than I remember. Yeah, the, I would say the best song in the movie is probably the one that the two main characters sing together about how oh, it's tough to be a god. Yes, that one's funny. That that one's it's probably the best song in the movie. Yeah, I, like it. I agree. Um, that and the actual theme song of the movie that plays at the beginning. Because... See, I actually like the, the ending song the best. Of those two. Mm. The one that also plays like, kind of in the middle? The mm. trailer blaze? Nope. The, um... Oh. Some, someday, somewhere, I'll see you in a crowded street and, uh, yeah. you know, okay. Yeah. yeah, the friends never say goodbye. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good song. Um, th it's also a very pretty looking movie, especially mm -hmm. for the time it came out, I mm -hmm. think. I mean, it... You can definitely see that it's just regular animation and not CG, though. Yeah, well, one of the things is it's very... It's... With it being an early 2000s movie, it's still kind of early on in the mixture of 2D animation and 3D animation. Because mm. you can see that certain elements of the film are CGI, like some of the architecture and usually the gold yeah. are all generated in CGI. Yeah. Um, uh... But, like, as far as, like, the 2D animation goes, the art style in general, you can tell that this is a a DreamWorks movie because it looks very similar, like, stylistically to The Prince of Egypt and the mm -hmm. Sinbad movie yeah. right after. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's, as far as, like, character design and the general, like, movement of characters, I really like um, early DreamWorks stuff before they transitioned fully into CGI. Um, uh they're all so so computer looking anymore. I really kind of miss old cartoon movies. And, I, I kind of prefer them just because they felt more genuine. And um, one of the, I think, the benefits of doing this series with you actually is the vast majority of movies on my list are 2D animated. Mm. So 
that'll be fun. Well, and and as far as like the 2D animation and stuff like that, I feel like there were things that they had to overcome that they couldn't just computerize. Yeah. You know, so like you really saw the artist's talent coming out in their work because they had to, I mean, like they had to draw it. You yeah. know, there was no computer smooth over. They had to make it work. Yeah, every every frame was a unique <laughs> drawing, even with, um, you know, digital coloring and uh, art like that being done digitally. Like, uh it was all a unique, it's all a unique drawing. Mm -hmm. Like every frame is its own drawing. So, uh, mm -hmm. whereas with movies like, you know, Frozen and Shrek, mm -hmm. like each character model that they have is an asset that they can take and drop into whichever scene they need it in. Right, exactly. So it's something that like physically exists in a digital space. Whereas as previously stated with 2D stuff, each um, frame is a unique drawing. Yeah, so. everything had to be drawn. So I just felt like it was more, it's more um it's a more expressive style of animation as well yeah and i feel like there's a little bit more art in it mm. i mean i realize that you can draw with computers and stuff like that but i feel like artistically there's more art to the old cartoon movies mm. style yeah yeah that's definitely the case um as far as voice acting goes i feel like it was pretty well done however yeah. I will say, um, for big adventure moments, it feels like they just had uh, Kenneth Branagh and Kevin Klein. Is that who? Yeah. Uh, it feels like they just kind of had them record one stock. Whoa! Yeah. For for every time they needed to react to something big. Well, and it was it was it was bordering on campy through the whole yeah. thing. Though it is kind of a campy movie. It is kind of it's a, a campy, campy adventure movie. However, I am going to look up that one voice actor because. I, I swear it's oh, him. She's convinced that the um, actor who does the voice of Cortez in this movie um, also does the voice of Sean Yu in Mulan. Though I'm I'm pretty sure it's not the same actor. Cortez, voice actor. Did, no, did I, you I specify didn't. what movie it's in? Uh, 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 no. What's the name of the movie? The Road to El Dorado. The Road to El Which is a bit of an odd name for the movie considering the fact that only about one third of the movie is actually spent on the road to El Dorado. The other two thirds are spent in El Dorado. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the slowest loading phone on the planet. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I have, a, like, if you shake it, it moves faster. Does it? No. Okay, what can I see? <laughs> Yes. God, Kevin Klein looks super old in that. Um, Cortez, Jim, Jim Cummings. Jim Cummings, I knew it. It's not Sean Yu. Jim Cummings is the voice of Tigger um, in most Winnie the Pooh stuff. Oh my gosh, I just can't believe. And also usually the voice of Winnie the Pooh. That he did that. Yeah. Wow. He's not the voice of Sean Yu in Mulan, though. Wow. Well, color me impressed. Yeah. So... Because his voice is so intimidating in that movie. And it sounds so much like the Sean Yu character. Yeah. Now she's going to look up who does the voice of Sean Yu in Mulan. Yes, if I can just get my phone to respond. You know, we have a computer sitting right in front of us, too. Well, I know, but it's all the way over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like literally within arm's reach. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the way over there. Yes. Oh, this is the 2020 version. Look up 1998, I think, is when it came out. Mm -hmm. Mulan, 1998. Look at you remembering your movies. Well, it was the one before Tarzan, and Tarzan was 99. Oh, okay. That's why I remember that. It's because they were coming out with them, like, annually. Miguel Ferrer was Sean Yu. Mm. An another shocker. That's another shocker. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have expected that from him either. But they do have those kind of... <sighs> yeah. Now all of China knows you're here. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's so intimidating. I love that. That, okay. I will say Mulan is is one movie that we're not really going to talk about um, for this channel because Disney doesn't quite need the attention. But, uh, yeah, but it is like my favorite Disney movie. It is a good one. Mm. Um, but I will say, 
we're probably going to talk about and compare a lot of these to Disney movies at various points, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Movie. But as far as Rhoda El Dorado is concerned, um, the only character that I absolutely cannot stand is Shell. Or mm -hmm. Shell or Shell. Or Shell, I think, is what she's Whatever her name is, Rosie Perez's character. Mostly because Mom doesn't like Rosie Perez. I don't, I'm not a Rosie Perez fan. I haven't been since she hit the scene in the in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, but I, what I don't understand is how did we get a New York, Puerto Rican accented, um, like, what are they, Mayans? I want to say they're likely either Mayan or Aztec. I want to say Aztec Everybody else, Az Aztec, as far as I know, leaned more into the blood sacrifices. I mean, everybody else that was talking was either totally normal or they had that kind of, like, Samoan vibe to them. Yeah. She's a New York, Puerto Rican. Yeah. And she's the only one who sounds like that. Yeah. Well, here's my thing. All the characters in this movie are speaking English for the convenience of the audience, right? So my my assumption is always that just like they're speaking Spanish. Why does everyone in El Dorado speak fluent Spanish then? Mm. If That's if true. this is I mean, likely like their should, first contact with Europeans. Right, it should be different languages. But you know Again, this is a little kids movie, so well, mm, Okay, well it is marketed as a little kids movie. Uh, yeah, it was marketed as a little as more of a kids movie. At it the is time far more because, adult. Yeah, because at the time <laughs> It came out at a time when DreamWorks was trying to make um, more mature animation, but it was absolutely not in a time when mature animation was the thing. Mm. Um, nowadays, you know, a lot more people, I think, would be willing to go see um, an animated film marketed towards adults. It just never happens. Um, yeah. I think because they tried it and it really didn't work. Yeah. Um, and DreamWorks... Um, after the first Shrek really kind of abandoned making adult cartoons. But if you think about it, they really are coming out with adult um, cartoons because they're doing all these live versions of all the Disney remakes. Oh, yeah, but that's not really an adult cartoon. That's no. A, that's either a live it's action... It's not, but it still gets adults to go to the yeah, movie because yeah. they're... They're feeding on their memories from childhood. Yeah. It's a marketing ploy. Like that, that new Lion King movie that came out. That's the live action Lion King. That's not live action. It's photorealistic computer animation. And, and of course it wouldn't be a video without the dog in the background. Yeah. Frankie! <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's photorealistic computer animation. And it doesn't look as good because... They look like actual animals, so they can't be as expressive. Well, and animals don't talk. Yeah, well, That's why cartoons work and CGI movies don't. Because animals don't talk. Well, Rocket Raccoon talks. Okay, Rocket Raccoon is a little alien, okay? Little aliens get away with things that real live animals do not. Yeah. But yeah, um... What was I about to say? Right. Uh, but yeah, so The Road to El Dorado was one of the last movies that came out when DreamWorks was like, we're making m more mature animation sort of thing. Which, and there were still bits in this movie that like felt like they were trying to appeal to like a younger audience to keep them paying attention. Like, you know, a lot of childish jokes. Yeah, the there. silliness. The general silliness and campiness of the movie. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, one thing I do definitely understand is I know that The Road to El Dorado isn't exactly obscure, but it's not exactly super popular either. It's got more of a cult following. Mm, yeah, and it's, it's at this point, it's pretty old. It is. And it's definitely not one of the ones that, like, you hear about when people talk about movies. Exactly. Like, yeah. when they bring up old movies, it's always old Disney movies or mm. old Pixar's, but not this one. Yeah. You know? And really, the oldest Pixar gets is early 90s yeah. or mid 90s I want to say so like there's not a whole lot of truly old Pixar to talk about and really when I think of you know old Pixar in terms of what movies get brought up um I think of Toy Story like yeah. that's like the oldest that my brain goes well that's because Toy Story was their first theatrically released mm -hmm. movie so I mean there are things that they obviously worked on that are very obscure like this one yeah yeah um well, yeah, this is a DreamWorks movie. But isn't that Pixar? No. DreamWorks and Pixar aren't related. Well, see? Ooh. So this is this is going to be a very educational series for my mother. Mm -hmm. 
she's going to be learning about not just more about American animation, she's just going to be seeing some French and Japanese stuff in there too. Yay! And at least one Brazilian movie. So. Well, that's okay. This is, yeah, this is going to, I think this is going to be a good experience for both of us. It'll be interesting. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I feel like that's probably everything we have to say about The Road to El Dorado this time. Mm -hmm. If it's one that you haven't seen, or at least haven't seen for a long time, I do recommend it. It holds up pretty well. Um, and if you haven't seen it and you want to show it to kids, just FYI, there's just a little bit of um, cartoon naked butt and cartoon... <laughs> dude butt, though. Yeah, dude butt, cartoon kissing. Yeah. Um, other than that, and, it... Uh, there's some suggestive... There, yeah, there, there's a lot of suggestive content in this one. Yeah. And a couple of uses of the word hell as an expletive. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know that's not a concern for the vast majority of people, but... But just in case it's your concern. Yeah. So, we want to give all the, all the deets. Yeah. Yeah, this is how I break down content for comic books, too, typically when I talk about them on my okay. channel. So. Cool. So, yeah. So, it's got a PG rating back when that meant something, so... Now there's no difference between G and PG. And the next step up is PG-13. Yeah. Yeah, fun. All yeah. right. Cool. Um, if you like this video and think it may have directed you towards an interesting movie, uh, like this video and subscribe. That's in order. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Come hang out with us once a week. Yeah. Once a week? Once a week? Come and hang out with us once a week. Once a week. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye.